30 days ago, I built a functioning beach ecosystem in my room. Throughout the month, these coastal plants and animals have evolved to survive the harsh seaside environment. I even simulated intense natural disasters to see how the animals would react. Despite starting as a lifeless desert, it was able to transform into a thriving, colorful beach. But to understand how, we need to go back to day one, where I got my tank, materials, and some plants. I started by laying out the base of the beach with sand, and then I added in salt water. Despite the ocean being cloudy at first, after just a few hours, the salt was able to fully dissolve in the water, leaving it ready to add our marine plants. I started with some basic rocks and seaweed. Then for the land, I added in a piece of wood, a bunch of tiny shells, and I put moss in the back to represent a seaside forest. The beach's foundations were now complete, but everything still felt empty and lifeless. It was time to add in our first creature. This may just look like a shell, but in reality it's much more. It's a protective home to keep its inhabitants safe. After surveying the environment for harm, the critter felt safe enough to fully come out and reveal himself. A hermit crab. The crab immediately went up and put his back against the wall in order to spot any potential predators. Despite their name, hermit crabs are actually very social animals. So in order to make the crab more comfortable, I added in a nice friend for him. The second hermit crab was shy at first, but soon enough he came out of his shell too. Everything seemed to be going well, so I decided to leave the ecosystem by itself for a few days. By day 4, the hermit crabs were still thriving together and had established their spot on the beach behind the log. But over and under the ocean, there was more life starting to develop. Not only had the plants started to grow, but earlier that day, I had added another form of life. Two little watchmen goby fish were swimming throughout this part of the ocean that they called their home. But these are not just normal fish, as these gobies have the special ability to scoop up mouthfuls of sand, filter out the food, and then spit the sand back out. This goby here used his ability to dig himself out a little home under a rock. Smart. Not only does this give the fish a tasty meal, but it plays a crucial role in cleaning the sand of our ocean and helping the entire ecosystem become self-sustainable. I left the beach alone over the next few days, and when I came back on day 9, I noticed a problem. The animals and plants were all fine, but hidden on some of the glass, early signs of algae had started to grow. While it wasn't much, if left unchecked for a while, it could lead to an overall decrease in water quality for the entire ocean. Now, of course, I could just clean it myself, but that's boring. So instead, I have another plan. I went out and bought five of these Astrea snails with beautiful looking shells. And I let them loose into the sea one by one. These snails love eating algae, and when left alone, they will simply go around cleaning the entire tank. There is one problem with snails though, and that is they are sort of known for being extremely slow. Bruh. So to help them clean up any algae that shows up, I'm also going to add in another creature that eats algae. Introducing marine hermit crabs. Now you may be thinking we already have these on the beach, but the truth is these are actually incredibly different from the hermit crabs we have on the land. For one, they're like 30 times smaller. And two, these guys need to live underwater and survive off eating algae. While on the other hand, the hermit crabs that live on the land eat moss and these little pellets. The newly added marine hermit crabs will do a great job at fitting between the cracks of rocks and accessing places that the snails might miss. Plus, these crabs are faster than the snails. Okay, maybe they're not even that fast. By day 14, the ecosystem was starting to look very cool with all sorts of different life forms. But one issue that I started to notice was in the moss that was supposed to represent a seaside forest. Over the days, the moss had started to grow at a rapid pace, and the beach was getting overrun. So far, I hadn't introduced many animals to the land portion of the beach, so this was the perfect opportunity. Crickets. These insects will be a good choice as not only do they love to eat moss, but they also wouldn't interfere with anything in the water. I added in a couple around the mossy area and they got straight to work eating the excess moss. 
but one of the crickets had made a mistake. He had wandered onto the sand towards a resting hermit crab. Now, hermit crabs are usually peaceful, but if they feel threatened, they will use their sharp claws. The cricket was walking towards his doom. After a moment, the crab turned around and spotted the cricket. The hermit crab got closer and closer until it eventually gave the cricket a tap. But thankfully, the crab didn't feel threatened enough and decided to just go on with his day. That was a close call. You better get back to eating some moss. Another few days passed, and today I wanted to simulate an extreme seaside weather event to see how the animals would react. So, I turned off the lights and started to pour down rain. The hermit crabs were not very happy and immediately had to take cover under the large log. But despite the rain being annoying for the animals, it's actually very important. This is because over time, the salt water gets too salty, and the freshwater rain will even it out to the correct salinity level. And during thunderstorms at beaches, the waves also get bigger. So in order to simulate this, I added in a water pump at the edge of the ocean. The water was now moving fast, and the gobies had to hide under rocks to avoid the current. The hermit crabs in their shells were also getting thrown around a little bit. But thankfully for the snails, they were able to just grab onto a wall and avoid the extreme water conditions. After a little while, I removed the pump, stopped the rain, and turned back on the lights. The storm was now over. It was now day 22 on our beach, and it was getting closer to the end of the 30-day simulation. But before the end, I wanted to make sure the entire ecosystem was self-sustainable. So far, we already had many things to do this, such as gobies that clean the sand, hermit crabs and crickets that ate the moss, the snails that ate the algae, and much more. But one important thing we were lacking was a creature that would eat dead organisms and organic waste that would otherwise pollute the water. So in order to solve this, I added in a new creature. Introducing the camel shrimp. This is by far the coolest looking animal I'm adding into the ocean because, I, I mean, just look at it. The shrimp immediately felt comfortable enough to explore around his new home, and along the way, he encountered one of the hermit crabs. The little crab seemed to be scared at first and hid in his shell, but soon enough, the two creatures seemed to become friends. The shrimp quickly became the king of the ocean. Wherever he walked, the other animals like fish would move out of his way. But soon enough, the shrimp found a nice cozy spot on this rock to take a rest. Day 29 was now here, but our simulation wasn't over yet, as now I was going to add in our final life and finish off our beach ecosystem. To make space for what I was going to add, I had to remove this bit of seaweed, and in its place I put a beautiful piece of coral. Okay, it's not very beautiful yet, but in a few days once it's adjusted to the water, it'll become alive and colorful. Now coral isn't just a plant or a rock, it's actually home to hundreds of these extremely tiny animals called polyps. Polyps produce a chemical called calcium carbonate, which helps the coral they live on survive. I'll just have to leave this coral here over the next few days until it fully lights up and comes alive. On day 30, every animal, including the hermit crabs, gobies, snails, marine crabs, crickets, shrimp, and plants were now living in peace with one another in a self-sustainable ecosystem. Thanks for watching, and if you didn't know, I'm very new to YouTube, and this is only my second ever video. It would mean a lot if you subscribed, as it helps me know you guys like these types of videos. Also, if you have any video ideas you'd like to see, comment them, and click the video on the screen to see my other video.